I was doing a, a liberal work like by day. That's what I used to do when I was in Ghana. And the situation here was very difficult at that time. Kojo was just 15 when he decided he would try to get to Europe. It was the first time he had ever left Ghana. My mother also died early, and my father refused to take care of us, so we were just trying our best to get food and clothes for ourselves. Kojo travelled through unofficial border points to Libya. He then paid a smuggler 800 euros for a place in a ship going to Italy. It turned out to be a dinghy. At that time we were on the sea, so there's nowhere to go. So we just, we are 75 people. We just sit in and they take us to in front. We spent five days. We lost the elections and at long last our balloon inflated. So we were just tossing by the waves. And finally we arrived to Tunis. Nice. The International Organization for Migration, or IOM, found Kojo in a holding facility in Tunisia. He accepted their offer of assisted return, along with money and advice to start his own business back in Ghana. But not all of his friends and family were pleased to see him. Some said, why have you come so soon? Or they said, some of your friends are over there working, why you didn't join them? And others asked, when will you return back? Like Kojo, the majority of Ghanaian migrants come from the Brongahafo region in central Ghana. It's an area with high youth unemployment. Many believe they can find better paid work in Europe. There's little official data on just how many Ghanaians attempt the journey each year, but figures are suspected to be in the thousands. Most travel illegally through unofficial border points to get out of Ghana. The whole of the northern part is actually very porous. Now, because of the unavailability of logistics, our patrol teams that are supposed to actually patrol the border do not have vehicles to do that. We, we still have, a, we're, we're, at this time, we're still doing foot patrols, which are largely ineffective, because we're talking about a, um, a frontier area of close to 300 kilometers. The government wants to try and stop unsafe migration at source, but for now, this region's only information centre about safe migration isn't fit for purpose. The European Union wants to help. It's pledged three million euros over the next three years to build and fund a new centre run by the Ghanaian government and IOM. When you talk to some of these young people, they will tell you they are looking at the news. Uh, many of them know how difficult and dangerous it is. Uh, some of them know people who died some of their friends. So they have some understanding of the dangers, which means that just information sharing is not enough. You also need to uh, work with these young people to explain uh, the potential that there is at home, to explain the, the, um, the risks in, in a way that they can resonate with. But it may be too late to stop these men. All in their early 20s, they plan to go to Europe to work and go via boat to get there. They know it's illegal and ask for their identities to be hidden. They say their families encourage them to go. They don't have the money, so they can't tell me that stop, 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 go. But they told me that go, it will be fine. Are you scared about the journey? It's not easy. It's hard. Life is, is like a game. Either you lose or you win. So either you survive or you die. It's not easy, but we, we, we force ourselves to go. These men all say if they could support themselves in Ghana, they wouldn't leave. But without any decent job prospects or a realistic chance of getting a visa to Europe, they are adamant a journey across the desert and sea is their only option.